Assalamualaikum and hi Today, my friends and I will be present about Audit Oversight Board AOB on AUD339 from AC1105E My name is Muhammad Alif Akmal bin Zulkifli and my friends are Hasha Baiti binti Chia Hashim Rian Hidayat bin Rahim and Siti Nur Afina binti Abdullah the Audit Oversight Board AOB was established in accordance with Part 3A of the Securities and Exchange Surveillance Commission SEA of 1993, which came into force on April 1, 2010. AOB aims to promote and develop an effective framework for audit monitoring. AOB's main mission is to increase confidence in the quality in the quality and reliability of Malaysia validated financial statements. The main purpose of AOB is to promote and develop an effective and robust framework for proctors in Malaysia. The AOB is then used to regulate auditors for utilities. Next, I will explain the explanation about the key issue, which is the first one is the rules of AOB. So we have two rules for AOB, which is the first one is principal rules and the second one is ancillary rules. So in the principal rules, we have two items, which is the first one is monitoring activities and the second one is competency. So for the monitoring activities, AOB is responsible to oversee the auditor as the establishment set up to monitor the external auditor's role. AOB will make sure auditors made a good audit when they are making auditing and be an observer for ensuring a good quality of financial statement. Companies can be denied for the auditing that has been made by the auditor even if the auditor has made a good audit. So, AOB will keep an eye on the auditor to make sure they are showing a professional act for having a good outcome from the auditing. AOB also works as a verifier and evaluator of the competency of the auditors also provide branding to the credibility of financial recognition. Auditors endorse corporations' money quality data regarding compliance to the accounting principles and procedures, speech act of the financial information, the treatment of transaction, and additionally, the international standards that corporations should adhere to guarantee comparison and consistency of standards. The role of the auditors is to ensure that the information of the public, the authorities, the interested parties are reliable and credible and it is a procedure that follow the auditor's flow. Secondly is the competency. The AOB has taken the initiative to observe two key elements of auditors. The first one is technical competence and the second one is professional competence. Technical competence is related to the technical ability of auditors to produce their opinions while professional competence is maintaining the independence in doing the auditing. Technical competence requires auditors to have necessary skill, knowledge and experiences to conduct the audit services. This standard could help auditors maintain the quality of audit and the performance of audit services that could add value to the entity. Professional competence is when the auditor is giving the opinion based on his ethics of audit and keep the independent while making the assessment. The outcome should free from outside control and free from bias. AOB will go through these elements to make sure that the auditors are making a good audit or not. So the next role is the ancillary roles. So in the ancillary roles, we have three items, which is the first one is empowerment role in the audit profession. Second one is the quality control system. And the third one is sustainability and insurance. So the first one is empowerment role in the audit profession. Empowerment roles for AOB and for AOB is enhancing the role as regulator, regulating the auditing profession in terms of continuous supervision such as registration, withdrawal and inspection, conduct investigation, and disciplinary. The AOB has the right to register and renew registered auditors in Malaysia. The empowerment role of the AOB has been given a mandate from the Securities Commission Act 1993 that the, the that the AOB be the registration of the audit and the auditors be inspecting by the AOB assess their degree of compliance 
waste auditing and ethical standards and the quality of the audit report drawn up of the financial statements. The second point is the quality control system. The AOB task is to improve and promote audited related activities, assessment of the quality of audit work, registered auditors, the corrective action process provided to the auditors indicate the improvement and promotion of the quality control system of the control profession. The AOB will do the inspection and came out with an inspection report as for looking for the risk management and for the firm engagement. The audit firm that has been inspected need to plan what is the firm needs to improve from particular engagement and from across the board. If the firm ignore the inspection, the AOB will enforce a standard collaborate with Malaysian Institute of Accountants MIA. The collaboration is to establish or adopt the auditing and ethical standards to be applied by the registered auditors to assess the degree of compliance with auditing and ethical standards and conducting inquiries and imposing appropriate sanctions sanction against registered auditors who fail to comply with auditing and ethical standards. This is how AOB controls the high quality in the audit profession to promote confidence in auditors. The last point is the sustainable assurance. The AOB is an agent. A review image of the sustainability warranty for the role of the external auditor. As a watcher to the watchdog, the AOB ensure, ensures the confidence in the audit work and justifies those opinions of corporations. The endorsement of the AOB on the externally audited financial quality information given by the external auditors through its monitoring activities is a form of assurance to the investors and public concerning the quality of audit work and reliance on the information provided for evaluation by the users. The image of the AOB as an agent of the external auditors somewhat verifies the technical ability and capability of the external auditors and hence supports the, fun, the professional evaluation of the external auditors as watchdog and corporate advocate the AOB validates the professional competency of the external auditors by supervising and monitoring activities the empowerment role in the audit profession certifies the AOB as regulatory authorities in the examination profession AOB is a statutory body that takes care of all auditors and observes them whether the auditors making a good audit or not. The roles of the AOB have clearly tells us the importance of the AOB. Overseer on auditing by the AOB can reassure more on the auditing that has been made by the auditors. Every company wants a good outcome from the audit and the AOB must make sure that every audit is in high quality. Indirectly, AOB can supervise the quality of the audit from the auditors to ensure the truthfulness of the audit. By the establishment of the AOB, scandals between auditors and company can be prevented. Therefore, AOB has been given a mandate from the Securities Commission to hold the inspection to the firm so that AOB can provide credentials to the audit profession. This can attract back to the public the trust of the auditors. AOB also has the authorized to discard auditors that has no ethics in doing their tasks or making fraud that leads to scandals happen. Next is analysis and evaluation. For this one, we gain analysis for opinion on the impact of AOB. The establishment of AOB may affect differently on the auditors. Their work now is being monitored closely and the sanction may be imposed if they do not follow ISQC or the Code of Conduct. After doing some research on the auditors asking their opinion about the quality of their work, some of them claim that AOB enhanced the quality of their audit but it also depends on the capability of the preparer. However, there is auditor who claim that the quality is moderate. They need to work hard and improve the quality of their work required by the standard and code of ethics. They also need to be more meticulous and careful when it comes to audit approach and conclusion as they have AOB to monitor their work. The second one is opinion on workload and documentation. Most auditors agree that there is additional documentation and administration to be done when the AOB is established. 
there are more disclosures to be made as well as compliance work to be completed as well as the expense of training has also grown. They need to conduct the audit accordance to the approved standards so the impact of AOB is more on documentation and administration part. They are also getting more pressure to do better and quality work since more documentation need to be done. On the other hand, one of the auditors interviewed mentioned that not all changes in workload and documentation are due to AOB. Some of these may be due to updated accounting and auditing rules which have resulted in more changes and procedures. Thirdly, opinion on relationship with internal auditors. The auditors were also questioned if the establishment of the AOB had altered their relationship with their client company's internal auditors. All of them clarified there are no changes at all in their relationship. There is also no frequent meeting for both auditors and they can choose to rely on or not with the work of internal auditors. Their relationship and collaboration do not affect their work of auditing at all. If they were to work together with the internal auditors, they need to do extra work. But if they do not want to collab, they just devise their own approach. Lastly, opinion on the effect on small and big firms. The introduction of the AOB appears to affect auditors in both large and small audit firms differently. It is difficult on the small firm as they need to change their procedures. As example, before, they just need to get confirmations on the subsequent clearance or receipt test, but now they need to adjust by themselves. It brings inconvenience for them because they lack staff and no suitable department to take care of the quality and control audit procedures. Moreover, they are still new to the standard and no formal training was provided. As for the big firms, there is no significant impact of the review on them due to the size of their company. They are not affected as they can provide the training needed and audit quality has always been the important thing for them. Now, I will present you about challenges audit profession during COVID-19 pandemic and AOB response. Many industry and parties has been affected by coronavirus disease, including the auditing industry. The auditor needs to face many challenges and new environment in performing audit. For example, audit field work provides a critical basis in generating an audit opinion. This is because various audit activities such as inventory count, verification of real estate holdings, and inspection of assets are not suitable to be carried out visually. It is difficult for auditors to assess it properly and it also takes a longer time than usual. Besides, the auditor has limited access to the books and record of clients as they less in raising question and cannot observe employee response in person. As a result, the auditor cannot clearly verify and give true and fair opinion. This limitation will lead to limit audit opinion and poor audit quality. Therefore, it is curial responsible for AOB to maintain the audit quality. There are many suggestions provided by AOB to auditor in performing their audit work such as to take a step back and reassess or update their audit plans to ensure that they have enough time to complete the audits or to consider alternative techniques to ensure that they get enough appropriate audit evidence to support the conclusion of their audits. In addition, AOB asked the auditor to pay special attention about certain matters, such as to determine whether any significant economic, regulatory, industry, or other development arising from the COVID-19 pandemic will constitute a significant event or transaction during the period that required the auditor immediate attention. While practicing all the recommendations from the AOB, 
The auditing is carried out the audit work and also enhance the quality of the audit. After analyzing the report, the Audit Oversight Board AOB finds it to be very useful in the working life, whether it is a small or large company. The AOB has increased the workload in recent years, and auditors argue that this could also be due to recent revisions to accounting and auditing standards. Their confidence in internal audit remains unchanged after the AOB is set up. This is because AOB was not a factor in determining the level of trust, whether the internal audit department is in-house or, or outsourced. This is this does not affect the external auditor's reliance on work.